Hey guys, today I want to do U substitution. And so what we're going to do here is we have to, we want to end up either factoring this or doing quadratic formula uh, to, in order to solve it, to find the zeros. The problem with quadratic formula is you can only use quadratic formula if the degree, the highest exponent, is a 2. Our highest exponent contains a 2, but it is not 2, it's 1 half. So what we're going to do instead, I mean we could factor it like this, but that's really a pain in the butt and we don't want to do that if we don't have to. Uh, what we're going to do is we call it U substitution. And we could use any letter at all, but once you get to integration by parts in calculus 2, they're going to use the letter U. So it's good to go ahead and introduce it now. Uh, again, I'm, my lectures tend to be targeted towards entry level math, so college algebra is what this is specifically for my college algebra students. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the exponents. And first, in order to be able to do U substitution to be able to factor or do quadratic formula, the first exponent must be twice the second exponent. Well, one half is twice one fourth, so that works, or is two times one fourth. Uh, but we need them to at least have the same denominator as well. So I'm going to rewrite this one. Instead of one half, one half is the same thing as two fourths. I'm just scaling it up. I'm undoing reducing. Now some people have a really hard time seeing things in this format. And so I explained it in class yesterday where you're going to take the one fourth and you've got to get it out of the first one. So I'm going to try something a little bit differently right now to see if maybe that will help, especially these students that aren't in my class. Uh, I'm going to switch this one fourth because we want to focus on the middle one. I'm going to switch this one fourth as well as this fourth into radical form. And so anytime you're dealing with fractions as an exponent, the denominator tells you what type of a radical it is. Case in point, a square root is a one-half exponent. Now, we didn't want to do a one-half exponent because we want the denominators to be the same. We want to be, end up with the exact same radical. So a one-fourth tells us that we are going to have a fourth root. The numerator of the fractional exponent tells us the exponent. So this is technically the fourth root of x to the first power. We normally don't write ones. So this one is going to be the fourth root of x. I still got the negative 9 in front of it. For x to the 2 fourths, the denominator tells us is that it is really a radical, and it is a fourth root because the denominator is a 4. The base of the exponent is what goes inside. And the numerator stays as an exponent. Okay. Plus 20 doesn't have anything weird on it, so it just falls equals 0. Now when you do U substitution or any sort of substitution, we're pulling something out to put something else in its place, right? Uh, I did compositions of functions the other day, and we were doing f of a number. So when I'm doing f of a number, I'm pulling x out and I'm putting a number in its place. Here, I'm pulling something out, and I want to put a variable in its place, a different variable. So I'm going to use the variable u. I'm going to look at this and say, OK, it is way too complicated right now. Math in general tends to be way too complicated. If we can make it simpler, that would be awesome. The thing that would make this really simpler is if this radical would have just been a regular x. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the radical out and we're going to substitute the letter u instead. I can't put an x in there because that's changing what x is. We're going to substitute the letter u instead. That's going to allow us to work with the other numbers and at the very end we'll bring that radical back in. Okay? So I'm going to take these radicals and I'm going to say let u equal the fourth root of x. Now u can only equal one thing, so if those radicals aren't the same, you can't let u equal it. It's got to be the same. You can do it with radicals, you can do it with different exponents, 
are with exponents other than your two. So if you have something that could be squared and something there, you could take and let u equal x to the fifth maybe. You could take u and let it equal a set of parentheses with stuff inside of it. The key is whatever you have has to be in both terms. The first one needs to be something squared. And the second one just needs to be whatever you're trying to take out. Okay? So this leaves us with, we've now got u squared minus 9u plus 20 equals 0. Okay. That looks a whole lot better. I can work with that. That can factor. Uh, if it can't factor, which it sometimes can, it sometimes cannot, all you would do is quadratic formula. But remember with the quadratic formula, you have a u. So it's u equals, not x equals. You've got to make sure you keep the variable that you're using. Uh, so this one can factor, so I'm going to factor it. Uh, I always factor AC method. No matter what, I'm always going to factor AC method because I used to teach guess and check. When I stopped keep teaching guess and check and I started teaching AC method, my grades on factoring almost doubled for my students. So my passing rates almost doubled because students liked the consistency. So AC is 1 times 20, so that's positive 20. B is negative 9. I want factors of AC, and I want those factors to add to make B. I always start with the number 1. 1 and what number makes 20? That's 20. That makes 21 when I add them. Not B. 2 and what number make 20? That would be 10. If I add those together, I get 12. That is not B. 3 doesn't go into 20. 4 and what number make 20? That would be 5. That's a 9. That's close. But I need a negative 9. So if the only problem is my sign, change all the signs. Negative 4. And negative 5 gives me negative 9. That is my B. Now what these do, these are not always your answers. These are your new B. So we're going to come back up here. I'm going to erase this note if that's okay. Not that it can be okay because y'all can't say wait, stop. And we're going to take this U statement, the last statement I have in black. I'm going to take U squared. Instead of negative 9u, I'm going to use my new b. So I have negative 4u minus 5u plus 20 equals 0. Remember, you don't want to factor unless it's equal to 0. Do grouping. So the GCF here is u. Factor a u out. I have u minus 4 left over. GCF here. Negative 5, factor that out. I have u minus 4 left over. If these parentheses are different, you have done something wrong. They should always be the same. Most of the time, the thing that we do wrong is actually one of these two GCFs. I had a ton of people on my 310 test that messed up one of the GCFs. They still had a GCF left over. Therefore, the parentheses weren't the same and they didn't know what to do, so they got it wrong. Factor out the u minus 4, left over is u minus 5. And then to solve for u, u minus 4 is 0, u would equal 4, u minus 5 is 0, u would equal 5. Now the problem here is a lot of people finish right there. but it didn't ask us to solve for u. The original problem never had u in it. It was always x. So you're not done because we still have u. So we're going to come back here and say, okay, what was u? u was the fourth root of x. So I'm going to come over here and instead of u, I'm going to put the fourth root of x. Over here, instead of u, I'm going to put the fourth root of x. 
And then you solve. To get rid of a fourth root, you use the fourth power. So I'm going to solve in purple. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. These go away. You are left with x equal. You can do 4 to the fourth power in your calculator. It is 256. That is now an x. Over here, to get rid of a fourth exponent, you use, or fourth root, you use a fourth exponent. X equals 625. Plug your answers back into the original to check. But now we have what x equals, and that's what we care about. We don't care about what u equals. You can plug this into your graphing calculator. You're going to have to adjust the window really wide if you want to use calculator, though. So I highly suggest my students, I tell them they've got to use U subs. So I've got to see what U is.